Hi, I'm Kenny Shanker, and right now I'm going to talk to you about bending and scooping on the saxophone. So, first of all, I'm just going to show you what that sounds like. So, the first thing is this. This is just nothing attached to these notes, just straight up. Right, here's with a little bit of a bend on the top note. Uh, so you can hear the difference. It's just, uh, it's got a little bit of a, it's leading up to it a little bit. I'm not playing directly on the note. So here's the mechanism for that. So I'm going to take off the mouthpiece to show you how this works. Now if you're new at this, a really good way to get used to doing this is actually just playing on the mouthpiece by itself. It's a little bit easier uh, to change the pitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow through the mouthpiece. I'm going to keep the air going full strength. I'm just going to change the tension of my jaw. So uh, you know when I tense my jaw tighter, the pitch gets higher. When I keep it looser, the pitch is going to get lower. So it'll sound like this. Just like that. Not exactly the most beautiful sound in the world, which is the mouthpiece, but um, it's a good way to practice getting used to that. Just getting used to your jaw moving like that. And um, so the idea behind a scoop is that I'm going to start with that lower pitch, start with the jaw loose, and I'm going to tighten it up uh, as I do it. And you can do it fairly quickly. So it sounds like this. Like that. And you can do it with or without your tongue also. If you want to tongue it as well, it's going to sound like this. Right. So enough of the mouthpiece. I'm so sorry about that, guys. Uh, so now the mouthpiece is going back on. Okay, so in context, uh, you can use that a lot of different ways. I mean, you can use that um, anytime, first of all, in sheet music, a lot of times in jazz and big band, you'll see like a little thing that looks like a, looks like a scoop on the piece of paper, and that is a sign to do one of these. So if it's, you know... <laughs> lots of different you know ways to use this so I'm going to show you a couple of different kinds of uh, bends as well now this next one is more of a grace note thing this one is uh, not using the jaw it's just using your uh, fingerings so what I'm going to do I'm just going to come from one fingering below so a half step below and just kind of grace note into it so this is going to be just an E flat to an E <laughs> right just leading into it Super simple. I'd use that something like this. Something like that. Um, and it's you know, totally different kind of sound, but I use it a little bit interchangeably. Sometimes like, it calls for something like that, sometimes it's more of a bend. Um, the next one is a more extreme example of a, of a bender scoop. This is something that Johnny Hodges, Ben Webster, uh, they used a lot in their playing. And those guys, if you don't know about them, you really should check them out. They're amazing saxophonists. Uh, Johnny Hodges was the lead alto player for uh, Duke Ellington's band. And uh, just played with all these beautiful um, scoops and bends and vibrato and, you know, just amazing. And Ben Webster, same thing. He was a tenor saxophone player and just so much expression. You know, sometimes if you're not used to that sound, if you just listen to it for the first time, it might sound a little bit dated. It might sound a little bit old-fashioned. Um, but it, it really is amazing. And, you know, when you kind of listen to it in context, it's just, just really special. So... I cannot do it as well as those guys, unfortunately, but just to give you an idea of the sound. Something like this. It's a very long bend, followed by some vibrato. So... Now, the way I'm doing that is this. Uh, it's a combination of two things. One of them is just a, a really loose on the jaw leading into the note. 
um, you know, and, and taking longer to go back up to the scoop. And also, I'm starting my fingering a little bit lower. So it's not so much that you can actually hear the fingering, but this would be if I didn't do anything with my jaw. It would sound something like this. Right? With the jaw combined, it's something like this. So that's another cool, like, bending, scooping thing. Um, so finally, uh, there's also the pop thing. So... Uh, in that case, I'm adding some growl, uh, and I'm also tonguing the note uh, a little bit harder. Uh, they also sometimes will just uh, double scoop the note, so... Something like that, you know, where it's like a double scoop, you know, all those things can happen. There's so many different possibilities. I mean, there's a million different effects you can get with it. But uh, I want you to play around, experiment with it, uh, have fun with it. Uh, so one thing to listen for and to watch out for is that you don't want to use too much of this. That's one of the biggest. Um, it's one of the biggest things people run into when they first start doing scoops and bends in their playing is that they use it all the time, and that's dangerous. You don't want to do that, especially you know you're playing in saxophone section like in a big band. You know, everybody's following each other. You know, everybody's following typically the lead alto player. But, you know, whatever you're doing, like, you don't want to do something that is, is out of the context for the music and also something that people can't match easily. And so you don't want to scoop every note, you know. If you're playing uh, a line that's like... You don't want to go... You know, it just it doesn't sound good and it also doesn't make sense in the music. So... Um, try to watch for that. And if you see something written in sheet music where it's kind of a, like a, like almost a, it's like a curved line a little bit, and it, that's usually, that's an indication you're supposed to scoop or bend the note. Um, so that is that. Now, uh, the other thing is I would record yourself when you're trying to do this stuff and just listen and make sure that it's sounding the way you want it to sound. That's really important too. Uh, sometimes, these things can sound a little harsh or a little bit, it takes a little bit of messing around with to get it the way you want it. So, you know, do listen back to recordings of yourself. You can record yourself on your phone, on your tablet, uh, whatever. You can even get little digital voice recorders at the store for really cheap, you know, um, or even tape recorders if you still got some of those lying around. But any kind of recording thing, you know, definitely record yourself. And listen, make sure you're not bending too much and make sure when you're doing it that it sounds the way you want it to sound. Um, so those are those things, and I really hope that uh, you're able to use some of that stuff and uh, have some fun with it. And uh, as always, you can get more information on my website, kennyshanker.com. And uh, anyway, hope you're having a wonderful day. Hope everything's going great, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Feel free to subscribe to see more videos. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.